The intention for today's Mass is for the souls in purgatory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and with you. My friends, that we may better enter into the sacred mysteries of the Mass, let us call to mind our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners we are made just, and though pitiable made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, my brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you, that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit, just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, as is written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David, for its ruins I shall rebuild it, from its ruins I shall rebuild it, and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, <clears throat> for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every town, as he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. 
responsorial psalm, proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. At first glance, there may not seem to be much in common between the two scripture passages today, the apostolic debate about the Gentiles and Christ's last discourse words about true joy. But if we look very closely at it, we see that there is an important teaching here that God gives us about taking seriously the word of God in its fullness. In, in the gospel, Christ tra traces out a very important trajectory between his commandments, which are the expression of God's love, which alone can lead us to true joy, the joy that every human being deeply and profoundly seeks and which isn't found in the things that are created, the things purely of this world. In the, in the passage from our, the Acts of the Apostles, we have a remarkable expression of the way in which the church seeks the truth in both the magisterium and in tradition. We have James showing in scripture how God has indeed opened a path to bring salvation to the Gentiles, and Peter interpreting that and applying that in his own experience, that of Paul and Barnabas, and his own experience as the expression of the Holy Spirit drawing out that scriptural teaching and applying it there and then. We, need to do the same thing in our own life, taking seriously God's commandments, God's words, because they are indeed expressions of his love, which help us in each and every situation in our life, no matter perhaps how new, perhaps how difficult, perhaps how stressful, he will bring us to that true joy if we can find in his word how the Holy Spirit opens up for us a path that leads us to the one and only joy that really fulfills and completes us. Let us pray. We pray for our church, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Robert, 
for all our pastoral leaders that they may help us find that path to true joy, which comes from knowing God's word in the light of the spirit. We pray to the Lord that each one of us in our own situations and challenges in life may look first to the word of God as we seek to open a door to the spirit to guide us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have asked for our prayers, the sick, the needy, for those who are without hope, for the many migrants who are seeking a better life, and for all those in our country and other countries seeking to help them find that life one way or another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of today's Mass, for the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord, hear the prayers we offer and grant us what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed, the blessed apostles, St. Joseph, St. Teresa of Avila, and all the saints who have pleased you before, throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O oh God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, you may be present to your people and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord, amen. We invite you to remain with us for the devotional prayers at the conclusion of the Mass. The Lord be with you. Bow down for God's blessing and respond amen to each part of the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who roam about the world seeking the ruin of souls, amen.
litany for vocations in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Saint Michael, leader of the heavenly host, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, messenger of God's divine plan, pray for us. Saint Raphael, companion of the journey, pray for us. All you holy angels and archangels, pray for us. Saint Joseph, protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, patron of parish priests, pray for us. Saint Aloysius Gonzaga, patron of youth, pray for us. Saint Alphonsus Liguri, patron of vocations, pray for us. Saint Charles Borromeo, patron of seminarians, pray for us. Saint John Berkmans, patron of altar servers, pray for us. Saint Maria Goretti, patron of teenagers, pray for us. All you holy men and women, pray for us. Be merciful, spare us, O Lord. Be merciful, graciously hear us, O Lord. Through your mercy, send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through your kindness, spare us, O Lord. Through the fervent prayers and sacrifices of your people, send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through the power of the holy sacrifice of the Mass, send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through the intercession of all the saints and angels, send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through the sanctification of the family, Send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through parents being generously open to life. Send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through the example of priests and religious striving for holiness. Send workers into your harvest, O Lord. Through a renewed sense of fidelity to our Catholic faith. Send workers into your harvest, O Lord that young people might seek to live the truth of Christ. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us. That young people might seek God's will for them in their lives. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us. That young people might hear the call to give their lives for the mission of the church. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us that all priests and religious might be renewed in the spirit of the new evangelization. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us. That bishops might be strengthened to be courageous shepherds. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us. That we may always zealously pray for and promote vocations. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us that those who are being called to be priests and religious might respond generously. O Lord of our hearts, graciously hear us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The harvest is great, but the laborers are few. We beg the harvest master to send out laborers for his harvest. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose the apostles to make disciples of all nations, and who by baptism and confirmation has called us to build up your holy church, we implore you to choose among us, your children, many priests and religious, who will love you with their whole heart, 
and will gladly spend their entire lives making you known and loved by all. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.